Hey, physics. We left off talking about like an intro to projectile motion. Or what I'm going to do today is a slight elaboration on projectile motion. Most of the projectile motion that you will do looks a lot like this, um, or looks a lot like dropping stuff or kicking it straight up and down. Every so often, you may be asked to do something when uh, something happens at an angle. Right? So all I'm going to do today is address how to work on or how to approach questions when you know you have a projectile, but your initial information happens at an angle. Because what we've talked about is like x direction, y direction, not an angle. So let's jump right in. Let's take a look. I'm going to give the intro to a question um, without actually asking the question. I'll just go this way. This is like, this is still fine. So let's take a look. I have uh, da, 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 da. oh, a uh, soccer player. Uh, kicks a ball at ten meters per second at a thirty degree angle above the horizontal. Right. And there are kind of three versions of the question that could be asked here. But right now, I'm just going to like hit pause on the question and look at the information that we have. Right. Previously, we would have just said like initial velocity is 10 meters per second. But if I draw a picture of what's happening, I have this soccer player about to kick the ball like this at 10 meters per second at a 30 degree angle this is this player is not kicking the ball straight this way and not kicking the ball straight this way it's like at this angle i need to take that i need to take that that angle and break it up into stuff going this way and stuff going up and down because that's what i know how to analyze i know how to look at information when it's just sideways or when it's just vertical. But I don't want to deal with this angle. I want to deal with this angle as few times as possible. If I look at this and I simplify it into just that velocity at an angle, right, this is 10 meters per second. And again, this is still 30 degrees. This is, you know, this much of the velocity is going this way. This is like, this is the velocity in the x direction. This is the velocity in the y direction. Part of it is going over, part of it is going up. 30 degrees is like this much. So more of it is going across compared to going up and down. Now, a really nice thing about this particular trig is that you don't really need to remember exactly SOHCAHTOA if you check your reference table you should recognize that we've talked about this and we've talked about this and this and this and this and next you see these a y is a times sine theta a x is a times cosine theta now what's a well a is just any vector quantity now velocity is a vector so this applies if i want to find the velocity in the y direction I need to take the velocity and multiply it by the sine of my angle. I do the same thing for x. I would just have to multiply by the cosine of my angle. Hmm. Well, that means that if I want to do the velocity in the y direction, that equals here for my example, 10 meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees. And if I want to, if I do that, I would get 5 meters per second. If I want to do the velocity in the x, that's supposed to be an x. There's a universe where that was an x. Velocity in the x direction, that would be 10 meters per second times the cosine of 30. And that would equal, I want to say 8.6. Okay. So now, this is actually really useful because I know information this is y information and this is x information. The other thing that I know is that I kicked the ball. 
Well, guess what? By kicking the ball, you turn it into a projectile. So all of this stuff applies too. So now I can start making a, a, a list of information, a list of, of stuff that I know. Right? I can say stuff for the x and stuff for the y. I can say that the velocity is 8.6 meters per second. I can say the acceleration is zero. I can say here the velocity is 5 meters per second. I can say the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. I need to worry about it being negative because our ball is going to change directions going up and down. So let's worry about the change of direction. So I know velocity, I know acceleration. Usually, right, usually, um, I'm going to have to worry about a change in distance and usually I'm going to have to worry about a time. Now I'm offsetting time a little bit because if you remember the amount of time the ball is, is going up and down is going to be the same amount of time it goes across. So this is usually how they'll lead, right? Version one of the question. What are the horizontal and vertical components of uh, velocity. Well, guess what? Down there. We totally already answered this. By doing this, we have answered version one, the most common version of this question. Cool. Version two. How long until the ball reaches its peak. Haven't I done this? Haven't we done this? We have this y information. We know that we're kicking it upwards, right, at 5 meters per second. We're kicking it at 10 meters per second. But of that 10 meters per second, not all of it is pointing up. A lot of that is pointing over. And that's what we did here. We separated it into how fast is it going this way and how fast is it going this way. And if I'm worried about going to the peak, I'm only worried about the up-down, so I'm only going to worry about the y information. I know how fast it's going up and down. I know the acceleration. I need to find the time, that's how long, but at its peak, I know one other piece of information. I know the final velocity is zero. So could I solve this? Absolutely. Totally could. That is just like this question. Or this question. We can absolutely find the time. Right? I'm not going to do it right now, but I could. The third version of this question How high does the ball go? Or how far away will the ball land? Right. That's the last version of this question. And if you think about it, this is also something that we've done. The only trick how high does the ball go is only taking into account going from here to its highest point. If you have, if you have to do how far away does the ball land, you need to double the time to the top. If you have to do the how far away will the ball land, you can double the time to the top because from here to here, right, the time that you calculate just there is gonna, only going to be from here to the very top. You still need to do the other half of the motion because we ignore air resistance, so that time is going to be the same. The same amount of time to go from here to the very top 
will take place again to go from the very top all the way back down to the bottom. And if you think about it, that's why when we did this question, we didn't have to do anything special at the time. We were starting at the top and reaching here. I could have very easily asked how, how much time would it take to go over this building, right? That would be similar to this. But this is, this is like as complex as projectile motion gets, all right? It's going to be a matter of moving, you know, recognizing something is happening at an angle. Okay, something is happening at an angle. Let me break it up. Let me do my Y component, my X component, figure out from there, and then look at the question again. Which version of this question is being asked? With any luck, you're only being asked this first part, but you are fully capable of doing part, you know, version two or version three. I've put up some example questions of what you might see on the upcoming quiz. Quiz will be early next week. It, the questions are going to be something like this, or something like this, maybe something like this, right? There'll be a little overlap with the last quiz. But uh, it's going to be stuff that, that you, you'll be able to recognize how to do, all right? Give those questions a shot. You'll notice it's a lot more questions than usual it's because I want to go through, like, literally all of them, all right? I want you to see and kind of process what's happening in all these questions. That way, when you see something on the quiz, you'll be like, yeah, piece of cake, all right? Okay. Make sure to do the practice. Like I said, I think it's 15 questions, but this is the hardest part. Recognize that it's at an angle. Do the, do the little bit of trig, which is on your reference table. And then split your information. Read what the question is asking. Make sure to answer the question. All right. That's all I got for today. I'll see you again on C-Day. Until then, take care, physics.